Hello everyone and welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you some English words to describe kitchen utensils. Remember, this is part two. I have already uploaded a video on part one. I recommend that you watch that, that video as well as this particular one. So there is part one and part two. Before we begin, please do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and share the video with your friends and family if you find it useful. That will help me grow this channel and continue to upload more videos to help you improve in your English. Thank you very much. Now let us begin. The first word is rolling pin. Rolling pin. A rolling pin is a piece of long wooden equipment that we use in the kitchen to flatten dough. Let's say for example you want to make pizza. You want to make it from scratch. After you have mixed the dough you remove the dough from the bowl and you now want to flatten the dough. You want it to be completely flat. You want to flatten it maybe into a circle. You will use your rolling pin. You will move it up and down on the dough to flatten it. You roll it up and down to flatten the dough. That is a rolling pin. The next word is frying pan. Frying pan. Now, we use a frying pan when you want to fry something. Let's say, for example, you want to fry an egg. So, you will get hold of a frying pan, put a little bit of oil, and then your broken egg, and you fry it. Okay? So, a frying pan is used for frying different types of meals okay the next word is roasting tin roasting tin roasting tin now we use a roasting tin to roast potatoes or chicken let's say for example you don't want to boil your chicken. You want it nice and brown and crispy. You want to roast it. You want to cook it in dry heat in the oven. So what, would, what you're going to do, you will pick your chicken and put it in a roasting tin. And then you're going to get hold of the roasting tin with your chicken inside and you will put it in the oven to roast it. Or let's say, for example, you want to roast your meat. You will do exactly the same thing. You will get hold of your meat. You will put it in the roasting tin 
and then you will put it in the oven to roast it okay so we use a roasting tin when you want your meat to be nice and brown and crispy on the outside but also completely cooked in the inside part of it and we use a roasting tin in the oven the next word is stirring spoon stirring spoon a stirring spoon is a wooden spoon that we use to stir food when you're cooking it you want to turn the food round and round and round you want to make sure that all the food in the pot is cooked and to do that you have to turn the food up and down round and round and to do that you use a stirring spoon to stir the food okay the next word is tongs tongs now we use tongs when you want to remove chunks of food from inside a pot or even a frying pan when you want to lift it out of the pan or out of the pot you use tongs they are v-like they are v-like like the number v and you hold them on both sides and you lift whatever you want to lift from the pot or from the pan by squeezing the two sides of the tongue together that is what we call a tongue the next word is whisk whisk now a whisk is what we use when you want to break for example um, an egg you want to fry an egg and you break the egg inside a bowl and you want the egg to be completely blended so what you do is you beat it up with a whisk a whisk okay the next word is oven gloves oven gloves now when you want to remove hot utensils from the oven it is advisable to use oven gloves they are gloves that you wear in your hands to protect your hands from getting burnt so you will wear your gloves you will open the oven and then you will remove for example the roasting tin from the oven so oven gloves are specifically used to protect your hands from getting burnt as you remove as you remove products or cooked food from the oven the next word is food thermometer food thermometer a food thermometer is used to ensure that the food is cooked completely to avoid food poisoning for example if you want to cook chicken you want to make sure that the chicken is completely cooked inside so to measure the temperature of the cooked chicken 
you use a thermometer. Now, doctors use thermometers to measure our body temperature. It is a small piece of glass that is transparent inside and it has some marks on it. Okay, it has some marks and numbers on it. Now, a normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So, likewise, when you cook food, you want to make sure that it's properly cooked. So, to measure that the food has reached the correct temperature, you use a food thermometer. The next word is pizza cutter. Pizza cutter. You use a pizza cutter to cut your pizza into small sections. Once you have bought your pizza or you have baked the pizza yourself, you want to eat it with your friends and family or you want to eat it by yourself. So, to cut the pizza into probably four or six pieces, you use a pizza cutter. The next word is wine opener. Wine opener. You have bought a bottle of wine and you want to open it. And it has a corkscrew. A corkscrew, a corkscrew is a small piece of wood that is used at the top of the wine bottle to make sure that it is well closed. So, to remove this little piece of wood, we call it a cork, C O R K. To remove it, you use a wine opener. The next word is bottle opener. Bottle opener. We use a bottle opener to open bottles. Some bottles have bottle tops. Like for example, if you buy a bottle of beer and you want to open it, then you use a bottle opener. Or if you buy a soft drink, like for example, Fanta or Coca-Cola, and it is in a bottle, to open it, you use a bottle opener to remove the bottle top. The next word is plastic zipper bags. Now, these are bags that we use to store food in the freezer. You do not want to waste your food. So, if you have extra food and you don't feel like eating it, then you can put your food in a plastic bag, okay? zip it and put it in the freezer. So we use plastic zipper bags to store food in the freezer. It can be all types of food. It can be vegetables. It can be chapatis, for example. All types of food. You can just put them in the plastic bag, zip it to close it, and put it in the freezer. The next word is kitchen foil. Kitchen foil. Now, we use kitchen foil for so many different reasons. Let's say, for example, you want to roast potatoes. So, you get hold of your roasting tin and then you put kitchen foil, you spread it's kind of silver looking. You spread it on the roasting tin. You put your potatoes 
and dripple some oil and put it in the oven. And the idea is that the kitchen foil helps to make sure that the food is not stuck on the roasting tin. It helps to ensure that the food is not stuck on the roasting tin. Or let's say, for example, you want to barbecue fish, for example. Then what you would do is you would place your fish on the kitchen foil. You would sprinkle the spices that you want on your uh, fish, a little bit of lemon juice, for example, and then you would wrap your kitchen foil and place that on the barbecue. And the idea is that the fish will not get stuck on the barbecue grill. Okay? So it is a kind of paper that looks metallic, okay? And we normally use it to ensure that the food that we are roasting or grilling does not get stuck on the metal. Okay, the next word is tea towels. Tea towels. Now, tea towels mean it is a piece of cloth that we use to dry dishes. After you have washed your dishes, they have water on them. They are still wet. And before you put them in the cupboard, before you store them, you wipe all the water away. You wipe it off using a tea towel. A tea towel. But also, when you want to bake a cake, for example, or maybe you just want to bake a pizza, after you have mixed the dough, you can cover it with a tea towel to let it rest and rise, okay? So a tea towel is simply a piece of cloth that we use quite often to dry utensils after you wash them. The next word is cling film. Cling film. Now, this is a piece of plastic, okay? It is a piece of plastic that is rolled, okay? And you use it, it is very transparent. And you normally use it the same way you would use a tea towel to cover your food, okay? Let's say, for example, you have made a fruit salad. You have made a fruit salad and you have put it in a bowl. So to cover the bowl, then you spread cling film on the bowl. Okay, you spread it on top. And the idea is that it sticks, it sticks on the bowl. That's why it's called cling. It clings, it sticks on it. And you kind of have to peel it off if you want to open um, the cling film. Okay, so cling film is a transparent kind of plastic piece of paper. It is very thin and we normally use it to cover different foods once we have prepared them. The next word is oven proof dish. Oven proof dish. An oven proof dish is a container that you use to cook food in the oven. It is a container. Usually it is made of um, a very heavy kind of marble like um, material. It is white. Okay. Most of the times um, it is it is white or it can be um, silver okay and the reason why it's oven proof is because if you put it in the oven it's not going to break 
you would not use your normal plate to cook anything or to bake anything in the oven because it would just break. So instead, you use an oven proof dish. Okay, the next word is baking sheets. Baking sheet. Now, baking sheets, we use them when you want to bake, like for example, um, a cake, and you use a baking tray, and instead of putting the dough directly on the baking tray, you first spread the baking sheets. You spread the baking sheets on the baking tray and then you put your dough and after that you place that uh, baking tray inside the oven so the idea is that a baking sheet is supposed to make sure that your cake or cookies do not stick on the baking tray okay baking sheets now, this brings us to the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope you found the lesson useful. I hope you can now describe more kitchen utensils. Now, if you found this lesson useful, please do something for me hit that subscribe button and the like button have you done that thank you and see you in our next lesson bye bye